to introduce you today to some three-dimensional planning. This is a patient that is obviously missing a tooth. You are looking at a cone beam three-dimensional image of this patient's left side. They are missing tooth number 14, which is this molar tooth we call the first molar, very important tooth. And you can see this is the internal of this patient's sinus in here. And as we change the contrast of the of the computer screen, you get an idea for you know some degree of, of bone loss that's occurred here since the tooth was removed. So in this workup here, since this tooth is a back tooth, we do not need to correct necessarily this complete vertical defect, but he does not have enough bone for placing an implant. We can see here as I take this green bar up and down, you can see in this bottom window down over here that that moves up and down. This is the patient's sinus over here and you can we can see that they have very minimal bone from top to bottom. That bone measures only about 3.85 millimeters, which is nothing. You need about 10 millimeters or more to fit an implant in. So this area is completely hollow. This is the maxillary sinus, and it will require sinus bone grafting in this area in order to place an implant. So let's do that right now on screen. Let's go into the implant window here for a moment, and let's let's just drop in a generic implant. You can kind of see that you know the implant is going to be um, you know taller. It needs to be a, again a minimum of of 10 millimeters. We like to see, especially if it's only one implant and ideally something of, of great width so we can increase the, the diameter of this implant to approximately 5.7 millimeters. As we travel into the three-dimensional planning, we can kind of get an idea for where the tooth is in space. I'm going to rotate that into a, a much better position over here and then I will also uh, just go ahead and attach a a tooth onto it. I'm just going to de default um, take this tooth in here and this gives us some degree of an idea of you know, where this tooth is in respect to its size but this this 3D planning is really quite critical for you know getting an, getting an excellent result and I'm just doing this as I go and you can see this implant is actually sticking inside this patient's sinus over here and I can take you through and actually look at the the internal of their of these areas I will take you through this section right here and you can see that this implant will literally just be floating in space and where we'll need to have bone is placed over the top of the implant and this is created in one of two ways, either through an internal sinus bone graft or we call through an, through an external uh, lateral window type of approach. So this gives you again an idea of treatment that's going to be performed. So what I'll do in a minute, I'll switch screens and I will show you how I treated this patient here and how we got to a, an excellent final result. Okay, so here we see the immediate post-operative scan taken of this patient. And here is the dental implant that is, that is in place now. It's, I placed it in a, an ideal position, centered between the teeth in all dimensions. The uh, patient had IV sedation and also mixed in some blood products we call PRF and PRP in order to enhance the healing of the internal of the sinus. And where we really see the difference is when I'll take you to what we call an arch section here is you can see that the bone of the sinus was now augmented if you remember that bone was very small it had a minimal a minimal height of approximately 3.85 millimeters that's 3.64 just to give you some sort of estimation of that and now we can see that the bone from the top of where it was grafted to the bottom over here is 12.89 millimeters. So that's quite a significant gain from 
top to bottom, this implant will need to heal for somewhere between four to six months, probably closer to six months, because that's quite a lot of bone added over the top uh, of the implant itself. And important in cross section, we can see there is the dental implant in the center. This is the center of the patient's nose. This is the sinus right here. And we can see that that bone now climbs over the top of the implant. The implant is centered within the space. And there's no bone particles that have come out of the sinus bone graft, which would mean that the sinus membrane was perforated. I like to use platelet-rich fibrin in order to cover the top of this membrane. And some people like to refer to this as a sinus bump, but I call this an internal sinus lift. And it's important that we can get a broad dimension of, of the bone fill in this area, not just the little sliver of bone. Those do end up, uh, ones that do not have enough bone can cause the implant to fail over time. And that is pretty much it. I think we've got a chance to look at all the all the dimensions and you can see the implant in the bone over here and I thank you for your time in, in viewing this video I'm Dr. Ramsey Amin BurbankDentalImplants.com thank you so much take care please post your comments and questions thanks so much bye bye